Okay, so first of all, if I have 45 degrees here and 315 degrees here, then I want these numbers to average to zero degrees. But of course, if I just do a simple average in Excel, I'm going to end up with a different number because Excel doesn't know that these are wind directions. So the first step in order to do this calculation is to convert the degrees into radians. And we can do this using the radians function in Excel. And radians and degrees are two different types of units for an angle. We can also do this conversion by taking the degrees and multiplying it by pi divided by 180. And you'll see we get the same number here as we do here. The next step is to put this into the cos function. And then we also need to put this into the sine function. And cos and sine, if you remember your high school trigonometry, will get you the lengths of the sides of a triangle. Because I have chosen degrees that are the same amount away from zero, I end up with the same number for cos and then the same number for sine, but one is positive and one is negative. The next step is to add these numbers together. So I'll use the sum function. And of course, for the sine values, because at the moment they are the same, but one's positive and one's negative, they end up becoming zero. Then I need to use the a tan 2 function, and the x number is this number here, and the y number is this number here. Now a tan 2 can be explained by this diagram, so it assumes that you have a line that goes through 0, 0, and also goes through the point x, y. And then it looks at the x-axis and you're looking at how far away the line is from the x-axis. So you're looking at this angle here. Now at the moment this is zero because of the degrees that I have chosen. But I can change this so we'll see an actual number. And then this is the same as using a tan and then taking y and dividing it by x. At the moment, this number is in radians, so the next step is to convert it back into degrees. And for this, we can just use the degrees function. And this will get us five degrees, which is the correct answer. I'll move these diagrams out of the way so we can see the wind directions again. We can also calculate the degrees by doing the reverse of what we did up here. So taking the radians and then multiplying them by 180 divided by pi. And we get five degrees again. Now there's a couple of issues with this. First of all, if I change this to 20 and this to 330, we end up with minus five degrees here which is incorrect. What we actually want is 355 degrees. So in order to fix this, we're going to use the mod function and take this number here and then the divisor is 360. And then this will get us the correct result. The mod function also fixes the second problem that we have, which is that if I change this here to five and this to 355, we end up here with a number which is really close to zero, but isn't quite zero. If I change this to number formatting and then increase the number of decimal places, you can see that it's ages before we end up with a number which is not zero. And this is because of rounding errors in Excel's calculation, but the mod function also fixes this problem. Then I have taken all of these formulas and combined them together into just one cell. And I will put this formula in the video description so you can copy it if you want. OK, so in this video, I have shown you how to average wind directions in Excel. And that is everything.